Pick any two consultants, say from different countries and firms. Now give them the same task. You might be surprised by how similar their approaches are. Consultants work in a very specific way, one that is common across the industry. This is because they are trained on and equipped with a common set of approaches and tools, which we'll call the consulting toolkit. To speak the language of a consultant, you'll want to understand this toolkit, which we will tackle in four parts. Problem solving, research, analysis, and project management. First, the tools and approaches for problem solving. Consultants are hired to tackle difficult problems quickly and on time. Overruns and missed deadlines must be avoided at all costs. This means they must balance rigor with speed. To get this balance right, many consultants take a hypothesis-driven approach, a bit like the scientific method. Instead of evaluating every possible path, pick one that you believe can work and validate it. Looking for the next global market to enter? Maybe start by evaluating the largest and most obvious possibilities, China or India, perhaps. Consultants describe the alternative, wasting time pursuing too many possible options, as boiling the ocean. Consultants must also prioritize ruthlessly. You'll likely hear the term 80-20, getting 80% of the results from the right 20% of the work. Basically, working smarter, not harder. Is a China market entry a big opportunity? The 80-20 version would be to quickly get a rough estimate. Is it more like $10 million or more like $100 million? The refined version might take weeks more of thorough research and analysis. Next, the research toolkit. Consultants are frequently hired for their external perspective, but that often requires new information. To get that information, consultants use three common research tools. First, interviews. Because consultants are neutral third parties, interviewees are often more open with them. These interviews can be internal or external to the client. An external example is the expert interview, where consultants pay third-party topic specialists to share their knowledge and opinions. In internal interviews, consultants speak to employees and management to understand how the business really operates. These insights, which might be unfamiliar to some executives, can inform recommendations for improvements, like workflow redesign or company reorganization. Another set of research tools relate to consumer or customer insights, like surveys and focus groups. This research can be done specifically for the client's project, or it could be done by the firm for its own, broader purposes. Firms often run in-house surveys to build IP that they can leverage across clients and to attract new business. Say a firm runs an annual survey on summer vacation intentions. Many companies in the tourism space would be interested in the findings. A final research tool is benchmarking, the time-honored tradition of comparing yourself to others. Many companies simply find it helpful to see how they stack up against competitors on key measures. Consultants can gather benchmarks from public data sources or proprietary ones, either those from third-party data providers like Bloomberg or Euromonitor or the firm's own internal benchmark databases. Next, the analysis toolkit. Analysis can be qualitative or quantitative. For qualitative analysis, consultants love frameworks, which add structure and clarity to ideas and help break down big, messy business problems into smaller, digestible chunks, like what we've done here, for example. Any good consulting framework must be messy. This is a term that originated with McKinsey and stands for mutually exclusive, collectively exhaustive. Mutually exclusive means the ideas don't overlap. Collectively exhaustive means comprehensive, covering everything. Consultants often build bespoke frameworks for each project, say, organizing a list of possible cost savings into MISI groups and subgroups. For quantitative analysis, consultants use classic tools like Excel, but also products like Alteryx and R, which are designed for large data sets. Generally, there are two types of quantitative analysis. Analyzing known data, for example, searching for insights and trends in historical data, or dealing with unknowns, forecasting and simulating possible scenarios. 
Consultants call this modeling. For example, a consultant might build a large and complex financial model on a spreadsheet to estimate future product sales under various possible circumstances. Say, what could happen if new regulation passes or if a competitor drops prices. Of course, a major focus of quantitative analysis is communication, data visualization. Consultants love graphs and charts and often use tools like Tableau to illustrate their findings. Of course, delivering all of this on tight timelines requires careful project management. Consultants, of course, use all of the standard project management software and tools. But consulting projects can be complex, multi-work stream efforts, and consultants sometimes deploy an entire team dedicated to project management, called the PMO, or Project Management Office. The PMO will often divide the project up into self-contained work streams that can be managed separately. In certain cases, the entire objective of the project might be to lead a PMO for the company, say during a company-wide transformation.